Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 31. Okay, let's see, what do we have for today? I did not want to get started on the bush fences straight away, I wanted to have something going on in the background, so we can do tangible progress while I'm busy satisfying my amateur landscaping ambitions. So, before we do that, we will do something that is a first for the channel. And that's a small tourist trap in Estergrad. We already have the attractions in the form of the amusement park, so that is what will serve as the place where we will welcome our foreign guests. Thankfully, the embankment mod we are using has harbors included, so we have that taken care of. These new houses are still far from being completed, so we can leave them alone. To set the stage for the tourists, we need a passenger port, and as I've said in the intro, we can use these embankments for this. Great, it's exactly the right size to replace one of these 100 meter wide pieces. We just need to bring out the terrain again, so we can make everything level. There is a microscopic gap, but it's barely visible even from up close, so I don't mind. This one also has a road connection, and to make it look nice, we should definitely connect it up. So that footpath was preventing me from getting rid of that node before. Sneaky little bugger. Let's just get the terrain done now, I want to be ready to go as soon as possible. Although the ship dockyard will be the biggest obstacle. Next, we need a hotel. I don't want to use the smaller ones, their quality is way too low for our great expectations. And for that, we need a bit of room, so one of these attractions will have to be sacrificed. A shame about this Ukrainian hotel, would have been quite nice. Although it might have been a bit too ornate to fit into the surrounding architecture. And this four-star hotel just barely managed to fit into this space. And as it turns out, even if we remove all the possible obstacles from the road in front of it, we still cannot connect it to the road network, and we definitely need that to bring in the food and alcohol we need for the guests. Yeah, unfortunately, this position will not work for us. We can make enough room, but for that, the ferris wheel will have to be moved a little bit to the side. First, make sure we can build the hotel the way we need it, and then we can put the wheel back. I think I will leave out the footpath for this one. The road connections will be plenty enough. Oops, wrong angle. Let's try again. As usual, removing trees will necessitate a reload to make those places replantable. Let's hope I remember later on. Now, this is something that I'm a bit unhappy with, and that is the ship dock. 
I simply couldn't find a way to incorporate it into the embankment without planning ahead. For some reason, it is much wider than its real building size would imply, so I couldn't build it flush with the coastal walls. And at this point, its footprint was too wide, and I couldn't change the ground to bring out the coast, so I could place the embankment again. I really wish the anchor point for these was on the other side, that would make our lives so much easier but we have to use it as it is provided. I think the only way to do it properly would be to first build one of these docks well in advance, far away from any existing embankment walls, and then we can just use mirroring to connect up the 100 meter wide versions. But space is something I don't have around here. Now, I could just build it here. In fact, I think this is where the final one will be placed in the future, but I couldn't judge where the final embankment will be, so I didn't want to gamble. Yeah, I did place it, but when I realized that I cannot really tell how I will deal with the embankments, I ended up moving it somewhere else. Plus, without building it first, I couldn't really tell how it would interact with the coastal walls. I need it to be built, so I can see how the clipping happens. We could just build it out of town, but the coasts were too steep, plus I think this belongs in the town. Just temporarily, this is where we will have it. Once I'm confident in the path the embankment will take on the other end of the island, we will move this facility there. In fact, in hindsight I think building a gravel road for it is a bit of an overkill. Oh well, it's just a bit of gravel. Here comes another first for the channel. And that is a bit of religion. Well, strictly speaking, it's not really a religious building. I was browsing the workshop, and came across this thing called a morning hall. As in, a place for people to mourn the dead, and not a place for watching the sunrise. I think this kind of spiritual services are acceptable in the context of the game, so I decided to grab it. For now, Two of these will be enough to cover the city's population. Later, we will need a third one for the new housing development, but that's not really a priority right now, the towers are still far from full. Hmm, maybe we should build this on the other side of the houses. I think it will reach the T-shaped apartment blocks a bit better that way. Okay that kind of clipping I will not abide by. Just give it high priority, and it will be back to normal in no time. This did mess up the ground between these two, so that's a bit of a shame. Maybe I will delete that footpath, just until I sort out the terrain, but we need it now to keep both houses at least a little bit connected to the services. And with all that going on, 
I think it's time we got to work on that big empty field we prepared in the last episode. First, how about we give it some character? Instead of an even field, we could add a couple small bumps and dips, so it's a bit more interesting. Then give it a bit of smoothing, so it looks natural, and we can start planning the fields. Just for the sake of service quality, I did lower the admission fees in the amusement park. The lower the price, the higher the star rating. Also, this port is for tourists only, so we better stop people from going to it. They should go to the bus station instead, that's where the work is. By the way, yeah, I did just tell the fuel distributor to move fuel to the rail construction office. Somehow I managed to stop the deliveries in a previous episode, maybe when I was messing with the assignments, and the track layers ran out not too long ago. I only noticed this after the last episode's recording. It's a shame it took me this long to resume the service. By the way, guess what coming next? We have enough money to repay the last remaining loan. And we are officially debt free. The remaining 130k we have in the bank should be enough to last us until we can make the next export. Thanks to all the constructions, we might spend some of that money on prefab panels, we need a lot of those for the new houses, but I think we will manage. Also, I did discover that the embankments have different railings. Let's use metal ones for the harbor, just to set it apart from the rest. And the hotel is ready to go too. Before we start messing with that big empty field, let's sort out the deliveries for this place. Unlike the citizens, I decided to provide alcohol for the guests. I don't really care how foreigners poison themselves. More money for us I guess. I did tell the DO to start buying booze, but I didn't tell it to allow those deliveries for the warehouse itself. Don't worry, I will fix that in a second. Also, these morning halls are quite expensive, given their size, they need a disproportionate amount of materials. Good thing we can cover the entire town with just three of them. Oh right. We need to let the DO know that it can deliver booze to the warehouse. And yes, I still managed to mess it up, since I didn't tell the office to also use the warehouse as a pickup point. Fingers crossed that I remember to fix that later. But at least the trucks can deliver the booze straight from the border, so the hotel will have it, just in an inefficient way. And this is where I did an ill-advised experiment. That traffic jam got me a bit worried, so I wanted to see what would happen if I removed the road signs from this intersection. Yeah. It won't go well. Anyways, how about we at long last start working on the field? In the last episode I floated the idea of using the ruler tool to design the layout. Since then, I discovered that using the textures is a better way of doing it. The ruler only allows us to make a continuous line of measurement, which is very awkward when it comes to designing this kind of pattern, we would need to go over multiple lines more than once. But with the gravel path textures, we can just draw out the pattern, and we have the perfect guidelines to follow. Yeah, something along those lines. Literally. 
and the hotel is fully stocked. Once the dock is complete, we can start ferrying tourists over from our neighbors. Before we start doing the bushes, how about we place a couple small clusters of trees? I think it would look better if the lines weren't all just bushes. Especially around the little drummer display. I still think it looks better with a proper tree backdrop. And yeah, I am still pretty annoyed that I accidentally managed to set the tracks under it to be upgraded. One of the biggest mistakes I did. In hindsight, I really should have scrapped that recording, and started over. But it's too late now. Let's just focus on placing the bushes, and put it out of our minds. Okay, those traffic jam notifications were getting too frequent, let's put things back to the way it was at the bus station. As usual, that pileup that got me spooked before was temporary, and the place still operates well with this setup. I think that will do it for now. Once the bushes are all fully mature, we can plug the gaps that will undoubtedly develop over time. And the bus station is doing great again. Let's try to be a bit more faithful in the future, and only do drastic changes when a problem persists over a long period. And the last delivery for the dock is on site. Won't be long before we can start using our first ship. Finally, let's buy our first ever ship. And now that I think about it, this is also a channel first. 
I don't think we used ships in the first series. Tourists, religion, alcohol, and now ships. We managed to squeeze four firsts into a single episode. Not bad if I say so myself. Since we are close to the Soviet side on water, this slower, but higher capacity Ukrainian ship will be perfect for our needs. It will just go between the town port and the Soviet border, and ferry tourists around. Let's send it out on its first trip. No need for it to dock in the city, it should go and pick up tourists right away. I almost forgot about the farm. In fact, I neglected it for so long, that the second replacement Dio managed to get built. I wanted to build a mirrored version, but this will also work for us. This second office is for exports if you remember. The first one delivers the food to the town. We just need this last truck to move over, and we can remove the old office. Also, let's not forget about the fuel deliveries. We have a gas station nearby, but why rely on that if we can just refuel trucks at home? Now, let's see if we can build the replacement warehouse without having to move the factory itself. Things aren't looking good right now. Wait, there's hope. Well, that's quite fortunate. We can do this without excessive rebuilding. We still need access to the original warehouse, although I'm sure the town will manage just fine in the meantime, but better safe than sorry. And the first tourists are already enjoying themselves in Estergrad. Sadly, the tourism industry is nowhere near as lucrative as it once was, but it still gives us a bit of pocket money, so I don't complain. And just in time, the fuel storage is over 80%, so we will export it in a second. We only have 50,000 in the bank, so we cut it a bit too close for comfort. As I've said before, prefab panels aren't cheap. And one of the morning halls is up and running. It might take a couple episodes to completely eliminate the complaints about the spiritual services. Also, I don't think this will impact the happiness of the citizens in any appreciable way. I let the game run for a bit after the recording and overall happiness was still around 82% in the end. So I'm not really sure it was a worthwhile investment. It does seem to cut into the time management of the citizens though. They seem to spend too much of their free time remembering their loved ones, instead of going to absorb some culture, or do a couple laps in the swimming pool. Let's see how things will shake out once all the spiritual needs are satisfied. I don't think we need to rebuild the grain silo. The current one will do the job just fine. We still need to make the road going to the second distribution office a bit nicer though. I will do that in a second, we are not in a hurry. And that's our tourism income. 2000 rubles. 
Maybe once the hotel is full, things will pick up, but it's pretty pathetic. Of course, there aren't too many attractions nearby, so we might need a couple more on the other side of the brown apartment blocks. With the bushes growing nicely, we could place a couple more trees. Not too many, maybe one or two, just to keep things interesting. Not to mention the coastline. Almost forgot about that. I don't mind placing them on the riverbank, they will not really block the view of the town, since they are much lower down than the fields. Wherever I see relatively big gaps, I just plug them with trees. Maybe a small cluster in this empty area would be nice too. We don't have overground power cables, so it should be safe. I don't know if I will keep the dry dirt textures, or bring back the grass. At first I kind of like the extra dividing appearance of the brown lines, but comparing it to the test areas, I think I prefer the greener version. Oh yeah, this one definitely need a cosmetic asphalt texture. Once we can plant more trees, we will need to place something, because it's pretty barren right now. Okay, let's take care of this road. I don't want to just upgrade it to gravel, I want it to be a bit more organized. Just like that. Works for me. Not really sure why people are suddenly having a problem getting culture and sport. Is religion really messing with their free time this much? Really weird. Only started happening when the morning hall got built. Rotating workers in the hotel is leaving a couple tourists without service. It should be fine, as long as the vast majority has a good time. Right around this time, my alarm clock started to get super close to zero, but I really wanted to finish up the farm, so let's follow the last moments of the warehouse construction. Okay. That's the materials delivered. Now we just need the workers.
I suppose I could have started building the rail connection as soon as I put the plans down. Oh well, it's a very short connection, so it won't take long. Anyways, with the new warehouse done, we just need to reroute the distribution offices. Oh, right. We need the road to be finished before we can assign the new food pickup. In the meantime, we can just start moving the food from the old warehouse to the new one. I just use one truck for this. It's not really a critical thing, most of the goods were already moved to the town already, so it's more of a symbolic gesture. And that takes care of the office assignments. Although at this point, it wasn't really all that important to get right. Once the new warehouse is hooked up to the rail network, all this will be handled by trains. All that's left is to do just that, connect the warehouse to the rail network. Unfortunately, the dirt road was in the way, so I just left the truck to it for now. How about we check up on the coastal tracks instead? The lower lane is almost done. I'm tempted to build a small wooden turnaround segment at the end, so it could start helping out. It just needs a signal somewhere in the middle, and we could tackle the higher lane from both ends. Okay, I think I can stomach wasting 24 tons of food. Once the last delivery is dropped off, we can send the truck home again, and place the rail tracks. Yeah, that will do just fine. The only thing we need to be careful about is the length of the trains. To ensure proper traffic, we shouldn't buy too many boxcars for the rail distribution offices. The usual six should be enough. And at this point, I was already about four minutes over the usual recording length, so it was time to call it a day. So, what should happen in the next episode? One thing we will need to sort out is the new service issues we discovered in town. I suspect it's the fault of the new religious buildings, since people have a limited amount of free time. So if they spend it in the morning halls, they cannot satisfy their other needs. Or, it could also be down to the new tourists, but I am doubtful about that. We have more than enough space in the services to satisfy both citizens and visitors, so I really think it's just time management issues. We will need to wait until the religion complaints are all gone, and see if the new issues persist after that. Then we have the problem of keeping tourists busy. We need to start adding some hoity-toity attractions, so we can start fleecing them for high-quality, high-price services. As I've said, the most logical place for that is on the other side of the brown apartments, in that big empty field below the bus station. It should still be in walking range of the hotel. We just need some restaurants, some high quality cultural buildings, etc. That will keep those walking money bags busy. And since the coastal rail tracks are nearing completion, we should start seriously considering the next construction hub. Not sure if it will be helicopter based just yet. Most likely, it will be a mix, like the third such hub we did in the last series. Two big road-based construction offices, but still have the necessary infrastructure for choppers, and we can just buy them as we get more money. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, then leaving a like and subscribing to the channel just might motivate me to make more. If you are more in the donating mood, you can find a link to my Kofi page in the description, where you can buy me a glass of water. I don't really drink coffee. Thank you for your support, and until next time, I will see you later.